Okay, now, unfortunately, I uh, have not calculated the right phase angle for this random orbit uh, to uh, intercept with Paul, but I don't think it should be too far off. Let's adjust our inclination. I mean, it shouldn't cost that much, and we have actually plenty of fuel. Fuel is not a big issue right now. Should focus on maximizing our science. But I'm just going to do the inclination first and then figure out the rest later. Well, I suppose everybody will want me to go to BOP next, huh? I mean, uh, we should definitely uh, send a special journey to BOP uh, because we missed it this time. Oh, missed it this time. I wonder if I should uh, try for it anyway with all this fuel. I think that might be overdoing it though. And it's not like we have any goo containers or science juniors left. Quite far away from Jewel right now. Okay, so let's see. Well, I guess we should catch up to a little bit. We're practically on the opposite sides of the orbit right now. Oh, I have to worry about actually getting a Tylo encounter at some point. For now, it should be fine. Yeah, so we clear that. Okay, we seem to be coming up on it. Let's see what kind of a situation we've got. Say... It's ahead of us. What the heck did I just do? Inclination. Alright. Uh, it's ahead of us, so we just uh, stay in the closer orbit for longer. Still ahead of us. Aha, aha, aha. That looks nice. Right. All right, all right, I'll just take that. All encounter. That's fine. I'll take that. Uh, could could try for an encounter that actually gets us closer to Jewel to get the Jewel Oberth effect thing. But again, uh, whatever orbit I try to get into Jewel with, uh, just by a random attempt like this, would probably not be in the right orientation to boost out. I'll end up with an apoapsis way out and. Uh, and I'll end up having to burn up my apoapsis to get back to Kerbin anyway, so... These are the things that uh, real real people who manage trajectories will try and figure out ahead of time. Make sure that the periapsis and apoapsis are in the right place for your burns. Okay, but anyway, we've got a lightweight 190 meter per second burn for, for Paul. So yeah, the reason I thought that this would be, and it's turned out a remarkable success so far, um, would be a good idea to do this sort of moon hopping is because I had managed to calculate that the delta V's between these moons was not that much. So, so math, yes. This is an interesting situation where uh, the maneuver to reach Paul seems to be directly in line with my prograde vector, which is also a, directly in line with Paul itself. I, I don't know if there's any reason for that. I, I think it's just a complete coincidence. And now, of course, the maneuver node is dutifully drifting away. Okay, let's see how close we can get. Oh, no, I don't really want uh, Paul, well, maybe I do. 
not sure what kind of orbit I want Paul to give me. Um, I'm gonna have to do a lot of time warping around uh, around Jewel be to get uh, Kerbin in the right place for transfer back. And if I'm gonna do a lot of time warping, I don't want to be within the realm of all the other moons because they gotta keep interfering with me and bring me into their sphere of influence and knocking me around and probably eventually sn smashing me into Jewel or something. So, so having a high orbit like this might not be a bad idea. That'll keep me out of all their uh, all their influences, uh, so that I can time warp safely. Okay, yeah, I think I've uh, sufficiently convinced myself that this is a good idea because we gotta be spending like three. Probably 300 days uh, waiting around for Kerbin to be in the right position. Uh, let me see. Uh, you know, it's not too far off right now. Strangely enough. Not too far off, however, however, our Paul encounter is in seven days. So, even though it's not too far off now, by the time we finish it with our seven days, it will be. It will be, uh, it will have moved forward and I think it's like, uh, we need Kerbin like 45 degrees behind us. I'll have to check that out. But, uh, I think that's the case. And even though it looks about that right now, if we want to do the Paul thing, uh, that is gonna change. Alright, anyway, let's head into Paul and then, uh, figure out the rest afterwards. Are we actually smashing into Paul? Uh, I think we're smashing into Paul. Hold on, hold on. It's probably not a good idea. Uh, well, since we wanna... Oh, lots of huge changes for very minor adjustments. Okay, well, this gives us a Paul periapsis anyway. 0.2 meters? Uh, yeah. I think uh, just turning the ship around might have that much effect. As you can see, just turning has <laughs> produced incredible jitters in my orbit. Alright. Uh, okay, well, it leaves me with a periapsis, and that makes me happy. I don't know if it's we're going to be able to get a uh, far from Paul or not, or whether it is a near Paul at all, I don't know. Okay, Paul's sphere of influence. Paul periapsis is there. We know our trajectory out, so that's fine. We just need to do what we need to do. Uh, actually, it would be nice to know where it is. I mean, is that it? Seems a little bit big. Okay, um, we don't have any more experiments left, do we? This one's done. And uh, logging temperature is not a thing. So just EVA, Bob. Whoa. Hi over Paul. Okay. We'll take that. And... Oh, heck, why don't I scratch the itch and try the barometer reading? Nope. All right. So, we'll try to get near to Paul. Can't set it as a target. Oh, Dre's over there. Okay. And, yeah, it looks like uh, if we stare at the sun, that that's Paul. Let's Let's see. Uh, looks bigger in person. Oh, uh, well, hold on. I, I didn't really think about how big the mountains of Paul are. Let's take a look at the map again. 
Well, it doesn't look like we're intercepting anything. Could do with some light, though. Okay, here's here's uh, here's as close as we're gonna get. So, uh, Bob, Bob's looking a little bit nervous, actually. Still high over Paul. Oh, whatever. We are not gonna get low over low over Paul then. We are just gonna fly by. Yeah, let's just fly by and maybe maybe I should try a bop too. Let's see. Let's see how much it'll cost me. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do some work here. We would actually let's let's boost our orbit, do the time warp to get around where we need to be with Kerbin. Then I'll do Bop. Mm. Then again, the inclination with Bop is... How much would it take to change the inclination so that I match Bop? That's my current question. So we're like that, so we won't need to tilt down. 200. And bringing the orbit in. It's not that bad. Okay. Hmm. Let me do uh, delta V calculation. Ever present calculator. So, how much fuel do we have? 12.4 ish tons. Oh, we've got a mass ratio of over two. That's very good. Six thousand delta V. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, with six thousand delta V, I don't think I have any excuses not to try and hit hit Bop. Yeah, uh, I mean, at least we'll do one crew, uh, one uh, EVA report around Bop, and that would be nice. Okay, now, so the only question is whether I do it now or whether I do it closer to when we're oriented with Kerbin. And I think the answer is uh, closer to when we're uh, ready for our transfer back to Kerbin. So let me uh, head to my Apple apps, apps here, and I want to just get out of uh, Paul's... Paul's area so that we're safe for time warping later on and don't bump into Paul like you know it almost looks like we're gonna do now okay so come along then should not take too much Delta V to push our orbit out here Actually, if I was smart, I should have uh, done some of the inclination burn here as well. Yeah, actually, let me do the inclination burn now. There's no reason not to. It's nice not having to land. You do have an overabundance of Delta V that way. So from Joule to Kerbin, negative 48.6. So yeah, about a 45 degree angle. Kerbin should be a 45 degree angle behind us. That's what the negative means. Right now it's just in line. So, time warp. And I really have to keep an eye on this thing somewhat too. I want to not be 
uh, at the 45 degree angle because we still have our bop thing to do. So we'll stay a little bit further out. Okay, that looks like a bit of a standoff distance, so 45 would be around here. I actually think we can get a little bit closer before doing the bop thing. Okay, alright. So let's see about intercepting bop. I don't know how long that will take. If it takes too long, we'll have to just head home first. I mean, just head home. Okay. Uh, oh, no, looks like we're in luck. That will be just fine. Seven days. Twelve days. Well, it's not perfectly timely, but I guess it'll be alright. Forget how long Kerbin's orbit is. Let's do it. We've got 6,000, well, probably like 5,700 Delta V. So, even if we don't get the Holman transfer point to Kerbin, we should be able to get home. I wonder to what extent we could get Bob to help us out with anything. I don't think so. I think it's like the weakest of the moons. No, no. It's too easy to get out of its sphere of influence. All right. Okay, let's let's do the last moon that we have not done. Then we'll be on our way back to Kerbin. Okay, so here we are. Uh, Bop. Can we even see Bop? Oh, Boppy. Uh, there's Bop. That's Bop. Not very well lit, but... But we have one thing to do. We have Bob EVA. EVA report. Hi over Bop. Good deal. Is there... <laughs> I... Itch I can't help but scratch. Yeah, alright. No, there's no such thing as temperature in space. Whatever. Alright, uh, yep. We have to look to getting home now. If we take a look at where Kerbin is, I've passed it again. But, uh, like I said, we have enough Delta V, so hopefully, hopefully that's not an issue. We've passed the ideal point, but let's just boost out. see what we can do so I'm gonna set Kerbin as target Okay, I sensed our inclination is giving us trouble. Ooh, we're way far off. That's not good. Almost tempting to just hang around Jewel for a while. Maybe I should get a... How much would it take for me to get into a tight orbit around Jewel? Do it like that. Yeah, let me just see what that would take. That would take quite a lot. It would probably take uh, nearly as much as a transfer would. I 
I don't know what the calculations with regard to whether the Oberth effect would be very useful in this case. I mean, of course it would be very useful, but uh, whether it would counterbalance the, the energy needed to get into a tight orbit around Joule, what that balance would be. I don't think it's, it's a good balance for getting close to Joule. Well, let me try and make the transfer now, and if it looks like that's not a doable option, I'll try and delay. Oh, okay. That's, that's, <laughs> okay. Well, actually, let's not uh, delay at all. Seems like we've got a thing here. Which way will be to our, oh, let me get the number says 594,000 kilometers. So let's say I just tilt it a little bit this way. I don't even have a little node, uh, but actually I can burn a little bit closer. Oh, way off. Ooh, okay. This is going to be touchy. All right, there's a Kerbin encounter, 1,389. Definitely not a good idea to try and uh, use Jules Obruf effect if, uh, if 1,389 was enough to get back to Kerbin. Let's hope it's not messing with me here. Not smashing into anything along the way? No, there's no way. Okay. Four days. I guess I'll have to try and make this. <laughs> Every time I say, yeah, I guess I'll have to make this burn as uh, close as possible. I oh, wait. We haven't exited uh, Bob Sphere Influence. This could be totally wrong. Uh, let's exit Bob Sphere Influence and then see. Okay, so just exited and let's see if we still have a uh, Kerbin encounter now. Oh? Huh? Looks like we do. It's a little bit different than before, but yeah, we do. Okay. Let's go for it. Obviously should have started burning a little bit earlier, but... My history with, uh, with maneuver nodes. So here we are, leaving the jewel system. Bob Kerman looks happy, and he should be. He's visited every single one of Jules Moons. I did not intend for this to happen originally, but uh, it looks like uh, the. I, I will thank Argamus for giving me the idea and convincing me to do the Lathe, Lathe Arrow Break, because uh, that certainly did work out quite well. Now one thing I want to do is I do want to pump the three parachutes on the capsule before trying the asymmetric parachutes on the science pods. So I'm going to stage that accordingly. So hopefully when I pop the asymmetric parachutes uh, they won't have, uh, they won't rip things apart or anything like that. If I need to at all. If it looks like uh, it's decelerating me slow enough so that it's safe. Just with the three parachutes here, I probably won't even use those two parachutes. Ooh, 10,000 kilometers. Let's see if we can get closer. Uh, about 9,000 kilometers. Looks about as close as we can get. Okay, we are on our exit trajectory. We're headed home. Wave bye bye to Jewel Bob, and let's. Well, I guess we can do it from this side. How long does it take to get out of the Jewel? Thirteen days. Wow. You can sort of see Jewel's moons around it. As we head out. All right. So uh, I'll see you on the plane change maneuver out here. Okay, so we're approaching the plane change maneuver. I've uh, plotted it and it seems like we might end up with a uh, Kerbin periapsis of 671 kilometers for a 36.7 meter per second burn. 
twitchy though and uh, yeah just way twitchy so let's head out to it well okay uh, that's more or less air braking altitude uh, we'll have to adjust it a little bit and probably right now we're actually smashing into the planet and don't know it yet but okay uh, guess the only thing left is I'll see you at uh, Kerbin Sphere of Influence okay here we go uh, I always seem to end up with these checkmark orbits when I when I approach Kerbin but uh, We've got tons of Delta V. I, I did a new calculation after our burn to uh, Kerbin, and it looks like we've got like 4,000 or so. Uh, so yeah, this thing is a little bit, uh, a bit overpowered for its purpose. Uh, which way do we, I want to go the other way. I don't really need to go any particular way around Kerbin, but, uh, wow, actually a thousand four hundred, really? Oh, but because that's because it's over there. If I did it right now, that would be different. Actually, let's try that. So, if I did it all the way close to Kerbin, like the maneuver node is located at, that would be a thousand delta V but I predict that if I do it right now I get a much more salutary effect flattening out my orbit with much less delta V Though I don't seem to have a periapsis anymore. Let's correct that. Okay, uh, current periapsis of 99 kilometers is outside the atmosphere. Do I want to get into an orbit and try and uh, land somewhere in particular? It'd be a first. We've got the Delta V. I guess I might as well use it. Alright, we'll uh, get into Kerbin orbit first, I guess. We won't aero break around Kerbin. Does look strangely like Lathe sometimes. Okay, let's make sure I can do this. You know, it's gonna take a long time though. Maybe I'll just use uh, air braking. Maybe I won't air brake all the way, I'll just air brake into orbit. Instead of air braking into uh, landing. I'm not going to use air brake calculator, I'm just going to estimate based on experience and hopefully that'll be good enough. Uh, actually, fiddling around the maneuver node is useless, so I'll just uh, burn and get it right that way. Okay, well, hopefully that won't uh, actually bring us into a landing. We'll, we'll get us into orbit so that we can pick, at the very least, a sunny spot to land on instead of landing in the dark. Alright. And if I do need to uh, burn a little bit more to bring us into orbit, that'll be fine too. Solar panels in. Oh wait, I'm still time warping. Solar panels in now. Okay, we're past our periapsis. Doesn't look like we did enough aero braking. Well, we might get into a uh, very, very eccentric orbit. I think this would be a time to help out though. <laughs> Moon encounter. Oh, how tempting. 
hit yet another moon on the way. Right now I'm simultaneously bringing in my apoapsis and raising my periapsis, that's why I'm tilted this way. Okay, I think I'll uh, keep the orbit at least this loose. And why don't we try and hit the water near the KSC? I'm not gonna say I'm gonna hit the KSC, but uh, let's let's just try for the water. Our orbit is completely outside the atmosphere, though uh, over here it'll slow down my time warping abilities. Okay, I think uh, I can arrange for a descent burn from the periapsis here. Well, with that I think we should hit the water somewhere around here. I don't want to hit the mountains though. I think I should err on the side of caution when it comes to those mountains and make sure we don't hit those. At some point I'll figure out when exactly to burn to uh, actually land a capsule like this at the KSC, but this is like maybe only the second time I've even tried hitting this water over here instead of just randomly coming down wherever, so... And it's only because I have so much extra fuel to burn. Come to think of it, I wonder if, uh... wonder if it's... Oh, oh, don't do that. Uh... Okay, forget this maneuver node. Um... Wonder, uh, what my thrust to weight ratio is right now as far as the possibility of making a controlled landing would be. We've got to spend a lot of time in the atmosphere, though. We're, we're already going to be hitting the atmosphere. Yeah, I think I should actually be shallow because we're going to be uh, getting in there already. I think I might be misjudging this bit. I'll hang on to the the rocket stage for for quite a while. After all, there's no deadly reentry, and I, so I don't have to worry about reentry heat. Let me just carry it in with me for for the time being. I think Bob is definitely admiring the beauty of this site, though. I believe his window is rather small and pointed in the wrong direction. I think we're going to be landing short. And again, that's because we're already um, only 70 kilometers when I started my descent burn. So that changed things quite a lot. I guess maybe I'll aim for over here instead. At least it's in the light. So, um... We're coming in slow actually. We don't even have re-entry effects yet even though we're hitting about 30. I'm going to uh, dump the rocket stage here. Yep, seems like the right thing to do. Uh, there we go. Have to make sure to dump it uh, before, you know, it might come smashing back into you. Yep. We will be hitting water. Bob looks fine. Well, Bob's a veteran after all. Oh, no, Bob's a little bit worried now. Okay, uh, first three parachutes. Okay, let's say us off. If they can slow us to below 100 meters per second before we are likely to need to get them fully open, then that'll be fine.
beyond that, I might still have to uh, pop the other two chutes in order to slow to less than 10 meters per second before we actually hit the water. Nope, don't need the other two chutes after all. Uh, we are 5 meters per second is fine. So, so yeah. It's a shame we didn't get more temperature readings and barometer readings, but otherwise we're fully stocked with science. We've got plenty of uh, EVA reports. Let's get to the surface and see how much science we actually got out of this. Okay, recover vessel. Okay, so after a rather arduous in terms of uh, having to transfer from one moon to another and to figure all this out on the fly, we managed to get 1,587 science. Um, could have been better, I'm sure, if I carried more stuff with me. Uh, given the fact that we didn't need the other two parachutes, perhaps uh, we could have stacked a few more things in there. But, uh, you know, crew report near Tylo. EVA report high over Jewel, high over Leif, near Leif, high over Val, high over Tylo. Um, near Tylo, we actually managed, high over Paul, high over Bob. Uh, material study near Tylo, material study near Leif, those are the two big ones. Interesting that Tylo is worth more than Leif. Uh, mystery Goo observation high over Jewel, high over Leif, high over Val, and high over Tylo and we managed to sneak one temperature scan in near late. Uh, and they credited us for recovery of vessel return from orbit around late, though. Uh, you know what? Uh, maybe we should get a whole lot of other ones. Uh, maybe we should get a recovery of vessel return from orbit around Val, Tylo, Bop, and Paul as well. Well, no, it's, we weren't in orbit around those, though. That's true. But we should at least get a uh, return from orbit around Jewel as well, because we were definitely in orbit around Jewel for a while. But I guess you only get one of those at a time, much like the crew reports. So, eh, it was a good mission, I think. So uh, I hope you did enjoy this video and this mission. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions for future missions, please do leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.